welcome to my farming guide for old school runescape whether you're a complete farming noob or you're a experienced farmer and your little tips or tricks this is definitely the video for you so um, welcome to my farming guide I'm so excited to bring you this guide. I have so much information to share with you. Uh, so I'm going to break it down into a couple of sections here. So as you can see by this table of contents, we have why farm, getting started, what to farm, lunars versus standard spellbook, unlocking new patches, unlocking the best tellies, um, doing farm runs, and then at the end I'll share some tips and tricks. So let's jump into it. So why should you start farming? Well, farming is actually one of my favorite skills. It was actually one of the first skills that I started to do when I started playing. Basically, it's really great profit right off the bat. Um, it's really cheap herb lore experience. It's, uh, it's a really passive way to make money as well. So you just do a farm run, takes 10 minutes, come back in about two hours and you can do it all again. Um, and it's a really great way to break up the monotony um, of the game. So if you're grinding something, you can do a quick farm run um, and the game becomes less boring for you. So there's that. Um, so I have uh, currently 89 farming, so I've been farming since I started almost a year ago. Um, 85 herbler as well, all of which has been paid for by farming, so I haven't paid for much of my herbler um, there at all. Alright, so you want to start farming, but you don't know how. It's all very confusing if you look through the skill guide. Um, there's a lot here that you can look at. Uh, basically this guide is just going to be for uh, herbs and flowers and allotments. I'll do a tree and fruit tree uh, farming guide in a little bit, but this is just going to be focused on herbs. So where the hell do you start? That's the question. First thing you want to do is put away your spade and your rake. We're not going to start with farming, we're going to start with quests. So first quest you want to do is Fairy Tales Part 1. Um, that'll actually get you to 17 farming and then you want to do Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf. Um, that'll get you to 25 in which you can start doing randoms straight off the bat. Uh, from there, I would do Garden of Tranquility and that'll get you up to 30. And then do Big Arms Adventure when you can. Um, that is, uh, we'll unlock an extra patch for you, but I'll explain that in a little bit. So that'll get you to 30 Herb Lore. Um, that can basically mean you can start farming Renars straight off the bat. So from the very get go, you can be making up to 200k profit per farm run um, just by starting those, uh, finishing those quests. So I definitely recommend starting off with uh, questing. Uh, Alright, let's move on. Alright, so what should you farm? So, at uh, 25 farming you can do Ranars. I would definitely recommend doing those. Um, they're really great money. Um, don't actually have any seeds or Ranars at the moment. I've moved on to snaps, Snapdragon seeds. Um, but Ranars are really great money, although they do require a lot of um, initial capital, like initial startup money. So what you can actually do is farm some different herbs. So for instance, um, toad flax and avantos, the seed cost is really low and then they have a really good um, actual price of the herbs there. So you'll actually um, make a lot of profit there. So let's just compare the price of some seeds here. So I have five snapdragon seeds, let's call it five patches. Um, and I'm going to assume that I get about six herbs per patch. Um, so if you're using super compost and the secateurs, the minimum you can get per patch is five, and that goes up um, according to your farming level. Of course, some will get diseased, um, but you will make a lot more than just the five or the six for each patch. So I usually use about six as my uh, standard of comparing prices. So the five seeds here cost 230k, um, and then we're going to put in 30 snapdragons, and I get back. Um, 290k so that's about 40k profit there uh, that's terrible maths it's about 60k profit there um, and then obviously you get more according to uh, a higher farming level so I, I rarely get this this low amount of seeds I usually make about 200k profit per run with snapdragon seeds um, but if you do toad flax for instance the seed cost is really low I think they're about they're less than a K each, and then the Toad Flax return is about 3K per um, herb there. So you actually save a bit of starting costs and you'll make some easy money there. So it really depends on personal preference and how much starting cash you have um, as to what to farm. Um, in regards to flowers, basically just do the best the best flowers that you can do. Uh, oh, that is herbal. Let me just whip up this. So 
you want to do flowers as well as herbs and allotments. Um, so basically if you have done the quest to get to level 30, start with limps straight away. Uh, they profit about 2k per seed. So I mean it's not a lot, but it still all adds up and it is useful for herb lore as well. Um, if you are doing allotments as well, um, and say you're 20 farming and you're making sweet corn, you can use a scarecrow in the flower spot and it'll actually protect those. Um, but I recommend doing watermelons. They're great for protecting um, pineapple trees when you're doing fruit tree farming. So basically just do the highest thing you can and then with herbs, um, whatever make the most profit. I do snap seeds because they do give a lot of experience and they're, they're pretty good money as well. So that is that for that section. So let's now move on to comparing Lunar Spellbook to Standard Spellbook when it comes to farming. So I usually use the Lunar Spellbook, I'm always on it, so it's really really handy for farming. It's got this great spell called Fertile Soil which basically uses a, a super compost on your farming patch uh, without having to carry it around. So it saves a lot of inventory space and it's really handy, you can just keep, keep the runes in your inventory um, and use it and it's really really handy as well as a couple of really handy teleports such as the Fishing Guild teleport for the Artaguni uh, farming patch and the Cathby one for this particular farming patch that I'm at. If you are using standard spellbook, I would recommend growing uh, watermelons. They make really great super compost. So basically in order to make that, you um, you, you farm the, the watermelons, you pick them, you put them in the compost bin, you wait uh, about 45 minutes I think it is, and then uh, you have super compost and then you, you carry buckets with you, you carry super compost with you. Um, definitely recommend using the leprechaun here to hold a bunch of buckets for you and super compost as well um, so that you can trade out your buckets, trade out your super compost as you need. Um, some people do uh, compost bins every trip but if I'm not on Lunas I just kind of do it as I need it and I'll just leave the watermelons growing. There's this great spell called Geomancy, um, you can click it and it'll tell you all of the statuses for your um, herb patches. So as you can see they're all grown, um, they're all super composted and Cathby is actually dead here. So you can see which is dead, uh, which is not um, and which ones are actually protected. But I'll go into protected patches in a little bit. So my recommendation would be to use Lunas. If you don't have 83 magic then and Lunas unlocked then I guess you're stuck with standard. Um, Alright, let's move on to the next section. So when you first start out farming, you have access to five different patches. They are the one in Cathaby, the one in Canifus, the one just south of Falador, the patch just north of Ardaguni or Ardugni, however you pronounce the Ardi. Um, it's just north of there, you've got that one as well. And there's also a farming patch on Zaya that you can use straight off the bat. You don't have to do any favors or anything to use. Um, so if you've never been to Zaya, definitely recommend going uh, just for the extra patch there. I'll show you where that is on the map right now. So that's where it is. And then this is all of Zaya. So this is where you get off the boat from Zaya from the docks. You just run south straight down the beach. And that's where it is, just there. All right, so those are the initial um, patches that you get when you start farming. There are a couple that you can actually unlock with some quests and some diaries, so I'll show you those ones. So once you complete My Arms Big Adventure, you can actually use this awesome herb patch that's on the rooftop of the Troll Stronghold. So the way you get in there is you go in the Stronghold and you run around until you see this ladder here and you can climb up that ladder. There's also an agility shortcut to get there which requires 73 agility and you'll actually get access to this um, sixth patch here. So it's a really handy patch as well. It's 100% protected so it can't get diseased. Um, this dude, my arm, will actually look after your patch for you so um, you won't get diseased. Still definitely recommend using super compost on it though as it will increase your yield for the patch. Once you complete the Mauritania Elite Diary, you can actually access a seventh herb patch which is located on the island of Harmony. So what I do is I teleport to Harmony via the Archaea Spellbook, just run down south and then here's an extra herb patch there. I'll show you where that is on the world map. There's Harmony, basically how you get there is Burke de Rock from near Canifus, or sorry, Mos Moslehamus. Uh, you can buy teleport scrolls there from the GE, run down south and catch a boat to Harmony. So that's how you get to that one there. 
So now I'm going to run through the best ways to get to each patch and how you can unlock the best possible teleports. So I'm going to start with the Falador. Uh, actually, I'll start with the Harmony patch. I did mention how I do it, but basically, when I'm on Lunas, I use the Spellbook swap. Go to the Arceus Spellbook, um, which requires 60% favor in the Arceus house. And then I use um, just a Harmony teleport. The best way to get to the Canifus patch is actually to do Ghost Ahoy quest, which gives you the Ecto file, which basically is unlimited teleports to Port Plasmus, um, Plasmatus, I think it is, um, and then that will just teleport you right near the patch. So you just run from here's the teleport. You just run to the patch just there. So Ghost Ahoy is the quest for that one. Once you have completed the quest Edgar's Ruse, you can actually use a Troll Heme teleport. So if you're on the standard spellbook, you can actually just use the runes, two laws and two fires. Or if you're using Lunas, I use the Troll Heme teleport tabs, which can be used by making a scroll of redirection on a house tab. And you get the scrolls of redirection from Nightmare Zone. I think they're about 750 points each. Um, really easy to get. I have a big stack of them in my bank and I use one every bank run. So that teleports you to troll him and I'll show you on the map where to go. So from here, uh, we're running down. There's a few shortcuts here. You want to head southwest and then another shortcut down here. So we run along, uh, down the shortcut, up past some of the trolls and either in the cave and into the agility shortcut there. So this is the agility shortcut to get to the troll him patch. Really simple, climb up the rocks, and there you are. The best way to get to the Artiguni patch is with a Artiguni cloak. Um, so Arti Medium gives you one teleport there a day and Arti Elite gives you unlimited teleports there per day. So I haven't used my teleport now today, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Right click, bam, teleports you straight there. Um, really, really handy, right onto the patch. If you don't have the Artiguni cloak or if you used it for the day, Next best bet is if you're on Lunas, you can use the Fishing Guild Teleport. Uh, it does require 85 magic. And it teleports you just to the west of the patch. So you just run straight east, and then you're at the patch. And then if you're on standard spellbooks, you can just use a regular Artiguni freaking teleport and run north. So that will take you down to here, and you just run up to the patch. Not as efficient. Um, you can also use a skills necklace, I'm pretty sure, to get to the ranging guild. I guess if you have the quest cape, you could teleport to the legends guild um, and run from there. I've never actually considered that though, but that's also an alternative. The fastest way to get to the Zaya patch is by using a Xerix talisman and using the glade teleport. And that will teleport you really close to the patch and you can just run south and east to the patch. Um, if you don't have the Xerix Talisman, you can use a redirection scroll on a house tab and pick Zaya for your teleport location there, or you can actually change the location of your house to Zaya, teleport in. I'll show you where that is. So there's the house portal there, and then there's the farm patch, so you can just run there. In order to get the Xerix Talisman, you have to do a little bit of Shazian favor, so you start off by healing some of the injured soldiers and then after that you can go and kill some little lizard dudes so zero to five percent you want to heal injured soldiers from there can fight baby lizardmen so the best bet is set up a cannon in a multi-combat area protect from melee tank the range so wear like range tank armor and go to town on them until you get a xerix talisman um, you actually use the fangs that you get to charge your amulet which can be bought on the ge um, but if you don't want to do that, you can just kill the Lizardmen, collect their fangs, and charge it with that. And I'll actually hold up to a thousand charges, which is really awesome. Next up, we have the Fally Patch. So the best bet there is to use an Explorer's Ring from the Lumbridge Diaries. So with the Lumbridge Hard Diary, you actually get unlimited teleports to the Cabbage Patch, which is really close to the Farming Patch there. With the Medium Diary, you get three teleports there. That's the best bet. If you don't have the diary done, I would suggest teleporting to... Drain or village with the glory and running up to the patch there. Or alternatively, you can teleport to Falador and run down, but that's a bit of a trek there. If you do have the minigames teleport to the rat's pits, the rat pits in Ports Rim, that's also pretty close, um, and you can just run up north to this patch there. The last patch is Cathopy, so if you have 87 magic and lunars, you can just do the Cathopy uh, spell, just teleport straight there. 
or you can use a Camelot teleport if you run regular teleports and just run from Camelot down to the patch just here. So those are the best ways to get to all the patches. Let's move on to the actual farm run. This is where it all comes together. So for a farming run, basically you want to go and hit all the patches, plant all new seeds and collect all of your herbs that you've just planted. So you want to do them all together and then you can go back to doing what you're doing. So the good thing about farming is you can do it every slayer task or between every you know two slayer tasks anything like that just every couple of hours you can do a farm run once your farms your herbs are fully grown you, they won't get diseased so once they're grown they're good you can leave them all day all month whatever and um they'll stay there so let's just run through some of the gear that i take when i go farming so we're going to start with the basic tools um a rake a seed dibbler a spade now i take a rune pouch um it's basically got Law runes, astral runes, and nature runes for just saving inventory space. You can buy these in Bounty Hunter Worlds um, in Hedgeville. Then I take some limp seeds, some snapdragon seeds, and watermelons if I need watermelons, but I don't at the moment, so I'm not going to take those. Um, then I also take some blood runes, soul runes, and cosmic runes, and I'll show you why in just a sec. So we've got the Xerix Talisman, the Magic Secretaires that you get from Fairy Tale Part 1. A earth staff or a mud staff, the teleport, the ectophile, a troll him teleport, and then I have full graceful here for some weight reduction. So that basically just means that I can run a little bit longer. Um, and then I have the explorer's ring here from the Lumbridge Diaries. So that ring actually gives me an energy boost if I need it. So if I'm running around so much, I can restore my energy from that. So you can start at any any location, run to the patch, collect your herbs. So I always wear. The magic secretaires when I'm harvesting, it gives you a bigger yield. The patch gets covered in weeds, you use your rake, and then you want to super compost it, and it's done, easy. I definitely recommend Lunas, it's so great. Um, and then once you plant your new, your new plants, you can use the things that you harvest on the leprechaun, and he'll actually note them for you, so there you can see. And then you can move on to the next patch, it doesn't really matter which order you do it in, but I usually like to finish at Cathby, just because it's right next to a bank, so I can bank all my farming gear and then get on with uh, Slayer or Quest or whatever else that I'm doing. If your patch dies, there's a couple of things you can do. If, if you don't have the Archaeus Spellbook and you don't have a, a pretty high magic level, um, you can just dig it out with a spade, just click on it, clear it, and then put more compost in and replant it, and then you just have to kind of consider that a loss. If you have got the Archaeus Spellbook and you have 96 or 92, you can use a magic potion and boost to 96 to Spellbook Swap while you're Lunas to Archaeus. And then there's this awesome spell called Resurrect Crops. It requires 78 magic and the Archaeus spellbook unlocked. And you can resurrect dead herbs. It's got a chance to, so there it failed. So it's a loss, but it does have a chance that it can save your herbs. If you're using high level herbs such as Snapdragons or Ranos that cost a fair bit, they're about 40 to 50k each, you'll actually save that money um, if they die. Plant some new seeds and then move on to the next crop. So this is the tips and tricks sec section, so if you're an experienced farmer you might uh, learn something here. Basically I'm going to run through some diary rewards that are really helpful. The RD diary, which is where you get the cape from, the cloak which can teleport you to the farming patch. So RD medium gives you one teleport, RD elite gives you unlimited teleports. We have the Falador Diary. With the Falador Medium Diary, you actually get 10% more experience at the Falador Farming Patch. Kandarin Medium, you actually get 5% more yield, so 5% more herbs from the Catholic Patch. Kandarin Hard, you get 10% more, and Kandarin Elite, you get 15% more yield from the Catholic Patch there. So as I mentioned, the Lumbridge Diary, really helpful. The Medium gives you three daily teleports to the Falador Patch. And then the Lumbridge Hard gives you unlimited teleports to the Valador patch there. So it's really, really handy for getting around. And again, I'll mention Mauritania Elite Diary gives you one extra herb patch on Harmony. So protected patches, basically the Trollheim patch is protected and the Zaya patch you can protect if you have 50% Hosidius favor. They'll actually look after your herbs there for you as well. You always want to be running, so that's why I wear the Graceful. And if you run on low on energy, you can use the Explorer's Ring to recharge your energy. If you have really, really low agility, you can always bring a stamina potion as well for that. One more tip though, when you're harvesting herbs, you can actually spam click the herb and it will harvest them a lot quicker. So you basically get a herb every tick instead of waiting for your character to do the animation for each one, you can interrupt it. The spell for the Luna, actually you can interrupt the animation 
So I'll just give you a quick example of that. So you can use the spell on the patch and then pretty much right away use your seeds on the patch and you'll go ahead and, and plant them a lot faster. So that pretty much concludes the guide guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you did, feel free to throw a like onto this video. And if you have any questions about farming or any questions in general, throw them in the comments section below and I will try and get back to you. If you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and you can follow me on Facebook and you can also follow me on Twitch for when I stream. All the links are down below and should be on the screen. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have no idea who I am, you can click on this video right here and find out a little bit about myself. And if you want to watch some more videos, you can click here. So goodbye and peace.